Is the new M5 iPad Pro that much better than the M4? Well, today we're gonna go in depth and compare the performance and the new features with this new Pro iPad. Now, last year with the M4, Apple had a huge redesign. We had the super thin design, better displays. We got the new keyboard case. It was a massive upgrade. And you could still buy an M4 for $100 less than this new M5 model, but this M5 is supposed to have insane performance. Now, as far as the design, the only thing that changed on the outside is the fact that we no longer have an iPad Pro uh, logo or text down here, and none of that tiny little font either. It's a super clean look, and this silver looks quite nice. Now, in the box, we do still have a power adapter, but this is only a 20 watt. If you wanna get the new fast charging that finally comes with the new M5 iPad Pro, you have to get one that is 40 watts or higher like the new one that came out with the iPhones. Then you could charge this new iPad to 50% in 30 minutes, which is sweet. And now I have the new one set up. Everything's identical, the screen's identical, but the first test that I wanna do is the SSDs. Even though we have the same capacity, we should have improved speeds and wow. Okay. I don't know if I've seen a tablet this fast. As far as the read speeds, we're looking at 1656 compared to 3413. That is more than twice as fast for read and that's very important. As far as write, 1492 compared to 2876. So about twice as fast as well. That is really cool. And now getting into Geekbench 6, the first thing that you'll notice is that we have more RAM. At the base, we now have 12 gigs compared to eight. And that is really, really nice if you do real productivity or multitasking now that the iPads have much better multitasking. Our clock speeds are higher as well with the M5. And let's go ahead and run our CPU benchmark. All right, we have our scores in, and this is one crazy iPad. In terms of multi-core, we're going from 13,000 to 15,446, that's about 15% improvement. And in single core, we have about an 11% improvement, 4,134 single core score, absolute insanity. Now these scores are lower than the M5 MacBook Pro, which is a lot thicker, it has a cooling fan. And this performance, even though it's lower, it's in the ultra thin iPad. In the MacBook Pro that we tested, the M5 actually thermal throttled there as well. So for the iPad, they lowered down the clock speed because we're just hitting a thermal wall. Now next, I want to look at the graphics. And look at this guys, we're at 73,446 compared to 55,000. It's about a 35% improvement. And this score right here actually is about the same as in the MacBook. Both of these have 10 core graphics. It's in terms of the CPU, they're both nine core. Uh, but if you spend way more money for a one terabyte, uh, then you can get one extra core. I personally don't think it is worth it. Now here I have Geekbench AI opened and I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the GPU because not only do we have more uh, GPU performance, we have new accelerators built into there. The ray tracing engines have been remade. I mean, it's a big difference in terms of graphics. And guys, look at this. For single core, we're already uh, about 26% higher single precision uh, score. But if you look at the half precision score or the quantize, that is more than double. That's about 2.3 times higher score uh, with a GPU for AI tasks. I mean, if you're using this, that is absolutely insane. And now let's get into some gaming benchmarks. I have 3D Marks, Steel Nomad Lite. I'm gonna use the unlimited mode, which is off screen. And we're also gonna test out some of the ray tracing, which is gonna be crazy. Now, while this is running, I wanna mention that uh, tests with the M4 iPad Pro, for example, in Destiny Rising, that was already capped at 90 FPS 
playing full performance. It's one of the best graphics available for mobile. And the M4 iPad was not even getting hot. So even the M4 has killer graphics. And unfortunately, I was not expecting this here. We have 27.4 compared to 25.4. That's less than a 10% difference. And if we look at the chart here, it started out quite a bit higher, but towards the end, it's not that much of a difference. So is this thing really heating up that much? Let's run this next one, Solar Bay Extreme Unlimited Mode. This is new here. And this is gonna make use of the ray tracing cores, which have been updated. There you go, guys. That is a much better improvement. We have 28 FPS with the M5 compared to 18.4. That is over 50% faster, about 53%. So if your game has ray tracing in it, well, at that point, it's gonna be improved and you'll have a big difference. It'll be a lot easier on the iPad. Um, now, as far as the previous test, it's just thermally limited. It can't just push the GPU to its full potential because Apple made such a thin tablet, which is crazy. And because of that crazy thinness, I have this Fleur thermal camera. I'm running uh, that test again, and I wanna see what we have in terms of temps. Is this thing gonna be crazy hot? So here you guys could see both of the iPads. Interestingly, the hotspot looks bigger on the left with the M4 iPad and we're reading 37.6, something like that. With the M5, 36.7, a little bit cooler actually. Let's go back here. Yeah, definitely hotter with the M4 version. So could it be that they are actually running a little bit more power to that older GPU and Apple is running less to not have your iPad get super hot? That's crazy. Now I have to be honest, I am a little bit disappointed uh, because in the MacBook Pro, when we tested it, the M5 chip, the graphics is the biggest improvement by far. Uh, it is absolutely incredible the year over year gains in the real world, whereas here, we are seeing that for raw graphics performance, unless you're using those ray tracing cores, well, it is kind of negligible. Um, and that means if you're somebody doing photo editing, if you're doing you know, any other kind of task that uses a lot of graphics, the difference will be very small. Um, so that is a bummer. Now, Apple did make some other changes to the iPad other than the performance there and the SSDs. We have Wi-Fi 7 built in, which is super cool. I have speed test opened up right here. Let's go ahead and run it. And with our Wi-Fi, it's pretty fast, but I don't think we're gonna see a difference. I guess we'll see right now. I think this is more of a future proofing. I have Wi-Fi 7 at home, so does Vadim, but for most people, it's gonna take a while but you can actually connect to all three different bands and run them simultaneously. That way uh, it doesn't have to reconnect, disconnect and give you faster speeds. Looks like we have 768 right here. Uh, let's see what we get with Wi-Fi 7. Oh, surprisingly, it is going higher and it is reaching the maximum of our internet. Okay, so that is pretty cool. <laughs> okay, holy moly guys, 358 upload compared to 100 and 90, that is pretty sick. And then for a download, 926 compared to 768. So with this new iPad, we can max out our connection, which with the old one we couldn't. And going off of uh, the iPhone with Wi-Fi 7, I've had better connection at my house as well. And the cool thing is this is actually designed by Apple themselves. They're not buying it from Qualcomm or somebody else. And with this Wi-Fi 7, we also have the latest Bluetooth, which is also going to future-proof you. And through this USB Type-C port, you can also get 4K 120 FPS output to a display. And that is using Adaptive Sync, which is basically like ProMotion, on these displays, and that points to a new Apple display coming out. 
So that is really cool. So if we go off of the N1 chip, the C1X chip, all of these little upgrades, it does future-proof it much more so. And if you get the cellular version, um, well, that one, you're gonna be saving battery life as well. Apple said 30% less usage when you're using cellular, and you're gonna get better uh, range and connectivity. So a lot of small upgrades like that, you get some better performance, and of course, the faster charging as well. Now, is that enough to make this worthwhile? And I will say, if you're watching this video and you're trying to actually decide between two of these, well, for a hundred dollars more, there's no doubt that I would be paying to buy the M5 version. Anybody that has the M4, I would not upgrade. But if you have one of the older versions uh, of the iPad Pros and you didn't buy the M4, absolutely upgrade because this new redesign the super thin, nice design, the landscape camera. This is gonna be sticking around for many years, just like your previous one. And I think it's an excellent time to buy one of these upgrades and not worry about next year having it be, you know, a huge upgrade and difference. Now, there's also refurbished versions as well. That makes it hard because for 750 bucks, I would be buying a refurbished one to be completely honest. Uh, we'll have links to both those down below if you guys wanna get the absolute best price. You guys let me know what you think of this update. Also, make sure you guys check out our M5 MacBook Pro video right over there. The same chip, but in a much more capable chassis. It is extremely impressive. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. This has been Max, and I will see you guys in the next video.